Welcome to Understanding How to Motivate to Improve Performance. This is an ILM unit which is brought to you by Professional Futures Limited. Hello and welcome to your Level 3 unit on Understanding How to Motivate to Improve Performance. This is an ILM unit which can be studied, accredited or non-accredited and we will be discussing that later on in this introduction. My name is Lindsay Heeks and I will be your tutor throughout the duration of this course. This is video number one and over the next few minutes I will run through the format of this particular course and what you can expect. In this video I will be showing you what will be covered but before we do that let's check that you have everything that you need. You should have a workbook for the whole module, especially if you are studying this on the accredited pathway. But before we move on, let's establish what accredited and non-accredited means, because some of you will be studying this as accredited and some of you as non-accredited. Accredited means that it has a credit value and will include an assignment to be completed by yourselves. So if that assignment passes, which I'm sure it will, it will go towards a formal qualification such as the ILM Level 3 Award in Leadership and Management. However, you can study this unit as non-accredited. So what that means is that you can take advantage of the video lessons, the activities that are planned, but you won't have to complete the assignment that is associated with this particular unit. So accredited means that there is an assignment that needs to be completed and goes towards a formal qualification. And non-accredited means that this is a development course for you where you are trying to develop your knowledge around a leadership and management topic. So if you have a workbook for the whole module, this means that you are studying this unit for an accredited qualification. If you don't have a workbook but wish to study this as an accredited unit, then please don't hesitate to contact myself. My details are on the first slide or you can make a note as follows. So it's lindsay at professional-futures.com and I will organise that accordingly for you. Also, included with this unit, you should also have access to the slides for each section and the videos for each section, all of which are available to you uh, for you to revisit at your leisure. Let's now run through the specifics for this particular unit. As we have already established, this unit is a level three unit. So what that means to you is that the level is equivalent to an A-level standard. Those of you who are studying this on the accredited route will see that this unit attracts a credit value of two. So if you're interested in studying this as an award, you will need to achieve another two credits, which is approximately one more unit. If you wanted the certificate, you would need to achieve a further 11 credits, which is approximately a further five or six units. And if you wanted to study this as a diploma, then you would need a further 35 credits, which will require a substantial number of extra units to achieve. Obviously, if you're interested in any of these options, then just contact me. So the next section refers to guided learning hours. And all that means is that this unit attracts nine guided learning hours. So what that means to you is that you should expect to be studying this unit for nine hours. That doesn't necessarily mean watching videos for nine hours. It includes the wider reading you may conduct and completing the planned activities that you'll be signposted to throughout your course. So next is the aim. So the aim of this course is for you to be able to develop knowledge and understanding of motivation theory and how it can be applied in a workplace to improve performance as required by a practicing or potential first line manager. This doesn't mean that this is only suitable for first line managers. This unit is entirely suitable for anyone who is in middle or senior management and aspiring managers. It just means that the unit is pitched at first line managers. So over on the right hand side are the learning outcomes and these illustrate what you should expect to do by the end of the unit. So learning outcome number one is that you should be able to understand the factors that influence motivation levels in the workplace. 
And learning outcome number two is that you should be able to understand how a theory of motivation can be used to improve performance levels. In the previous slide, we discussed the learning outcomes. So now we'll focus on what specifically you will need to do in order to achieve these outcomes. And these are known as assessment criteria. So I'm now going to highlight the key verbs for each of the criteria as it's, as it's vital that you specifically answer and achieve these key verbs in order to pass your assignment. Okay, so the first one that I want to draw your attention to is AC 1.1, which is to define, okay? So define the term motivation. This is where you create your own statement on what you believe motivation is. So those of you who are studying this on the accredited route, then define is one of the key verbs that you need to ensure you do when writing your assignment. So the next one is AC 1.2. And that is to describe. So to describe the factors that may affect motivation levels in the workplace. This is where you paint a picture in words on the different factors that can affect motivation. So for example, management style. So the next criteria is AC 1.3, which is to explain. So explain how individual differences affect levels of motivation in the workplace. So this is where you give meaning and reasons why personality differences can affect motivation. And the next one, the last one for this learning outcome is AC 1.4, which is to explain again. So explain the potential impact on organisational performance if employee motivation levels are low. So this is where you give meaning and reasons again as to why low motivation will affect organisational performance. So what this learning outcome requires is that you will be able to have an overall understanding of the factors that can impact on motivation levels. Um, and you will do this by first of all identifying what motivation is, looking at the factors that can affect motivation, so for example management style, by explaining how people differences will affect motivation levels. So for example, characters and personalities and what the effect is if motivation levels are low. To help you understand the factors that influence motivation in the workplace, there are three videos available which will provide you with the knowledge necessary to meet out learning outcome number one. So video two looks at what motivation is and why it's so important. And video three looks at the Hertzberg theory of motivation. Video four looks at the use of setting smart objectives and job design in order to motivate staff. The next learning outcome is learning outcome number two which is for you to be able to understand how a theory of motivation can be used to improve performance levels. So to meet this learning outcome, there are three assessment criteria which must be answered. So again, I shall highlight the key verbs which indicate what must be done when answering these criteria in your assignment. Okay, so the first one is AC 2.1 which is to describe a recognised theory of motivation. Now this is where you paint a picture in words on the motivation theory you want to write about. So this may well be the Hertzberg theory, it might well be Maslow, or it might be any others that you uh, could have researched. So the next one is AC 2.2 which is again to describe. So describe ways in which knowledge of a theory of motivation can be used to improve performance in the workplace. So this is where you paint a picture in words again on how your new knowledge on the theory mentioned in the last criteria can improve performance. So for example, this might be how hygiene factors don't actually motivate. And the last one is AC 2.3. And this is to explain. So explain how to use employee engagement to increase motivation levels. So this is where you apply meaning to and reasons why employee engagement can increase uh, motivation. So for example, making work fun or involving staff in decisions. 
So this learning outcome requires you to understand the theory of motivation such as the Hertzberg and how this knowledge will improve performance in the workplace. It also requires you to understand and explain how employee engagement increases motivation levels. To help you understand how a theory of motivation can be used to improve performance levels, there are five videos which will provide you with the knowledge in order to achieve learning outcome number two. So video three looks at Hertzberg theory of motivation. Video five looks at the psychological contract and employee engagement. Video six looks at attitudes and values in relation to motivation. And video seven looks at monitoring team performance. The last video that is provided within your suite is video number eight, which gives you a summary of what we have studied, some final checks and some essential top tips that will help you to achieve your pass within your accredited qualification, but also some top tips to help you become a more effective leader if you're on the non-accredited route. I'm sure you'll enjoy your study on this course and I look forward to working with you over the next batch of videos. So I look forward to seeing you in video number two. So see you soon. Bye bye. Visit our website to access the full course on understanding how to motivate to improve performance, where you'll also find a really useful assignment guide that will help you get through writing your assignments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss our uh, latest lessons and obviously enjoy your next video.